Enums are one of the best things to happen to programming, and that's including the release of the best operating system of all time, Windows Vista. But before we talk about enums, let's brush up on a little bit of category theory. And despite the word theory being added to scare non-academics, it's really not too bad. In programming, types are how we categorize things. For example, this partner class contains two variables, both of which are Boolean types. So the partner type actually contains other types. And this is, this is common when working with collection types like lists, tuples, and classes. The interesting thing about this partner class is that it really has four possible combinations of values. Studies finance can be true, has trust fund, also true. Studies finance, true, has trust fund, false. Studies finance, false, has trust fund, true. Studies finance, false, has trust fund, false. And that seems manageable, but what happens if we add a third field? Well, if it's also a Boolean, then the number of possibilities actually jumps up to eight because we have to multiply four by the available combinations again, which is two, getting eight possible total combinations. If we add another, we get 16. And if we go up to five, then we get a total number of 32 combinations. And if we add a string into the mix instead of a Boolean, then the number of total possible values essentially goes up to infinity because a string can contain any number of combinations of characters. Now, this is where the term product type and some type come into play. And they're also sometimes referred to as algebraic data types just to scare the non-PhDs. The partner class is a product type because the total number of possible combinations of values is the product of the number of fields, right? Two times two times two times two times two, however many Boolean fields we had in there. But product types are very interesting. Almost everything is a product type by default. Lists, tuples, and classes with, you know, a number of properties. And the problem is that product types result in many possibilities. And even primitive types like strings and integers have the same problem. When you have a string type, you don't know if that string value contains the entire text of the novel Moby Dick or the string Hello World or the empty string. There's, there's so many possible combinations that could be stored in that type. And that makes them hard to work with, right? When you write a function that accepts one of those types as a parameter, you have endless if else statements and switch cases and fallbacks to handle all of the different possibilities that could arise when your function is called with different values. That's where some types come into play. They're just types where the number of possibilities is limited to a finite set. A Boolean is a good example of a some type. It has two possibilities, true and false. When you're working with a Boolean, all you have to think about is whether this variable is true or false. Okay, so now we can finally talk about enums. Enums are another some type, like a Boolean, and really I like to think about them as kind of extended Booleans. For example, let's say we want to write a button class, and in this button class we want to specify that it can be one of three colors. We could have the button's constructor accept just a string to define which color it's going to be, and we'd accept either the string red, the string green, or the string blue. Now the problem is that our button class now needs to take into account that whoever's creating a new button could pass in any string, right? They could pass in the string teal, or they could just pass in a misspelled blue, and we need to handle both of those cases. The better option is to use an enum. And at least in Python, the way you can define an enum is using the enum package. You pass in the name of the enum, in our case, we'll use color, and then the possible values that are valid in this new type. So in our case, red, green, and blue. Now in our code, if we use color.red, it will work. <laughs> it will resolve to the color red. And as far as the color type is concerned, everything will work smoothly. But if we try to use a color that was not specified when we created the color type, like teal, the Python interpreter itself will actually throw an error. So now the language itself will raise an exception if we ever try to use the wrong value. And that means that in all of our code, we no longer need to have all of these if else statements checking and making sure that the variable maps to a valid value, right? There might be 10 different places in code that have to check the value and, and we don't want to rewrite all that code. In a language like Python, the interpreter will yell at us when we run the code if we ever use an invalid value in an enum type. But in statically typed languages, like a lot of the compiled languages like Go or TypeScript or C, 
we'd actually get the errors either at compile time or even better right in our editor telling us that those values are not allowed for that type. That said, enums are still useful even in a language like Python. Python's not statically typed, so it does mean we'll have to actually run the code to see the type errors, but at least the valid values, red, green, and blue, are defined when we create the enum type. So there's a single place to reference so we as developers can see what colors are valid types and we won't have to keep redefining it every time we check the value. 